So in this case, the two substrates are alpha KG and, and some L amino acid. If this were alanine, it would be an alanine amino transferase, or it could be an aspartate amino transferase, etc. That's just a, that's just nomenclature. Um, okay, so we've always got PLP cofactor, and we've always got um, two substrates and two products. Right? So here, for example, we've got some amino acid, we've got alpha ketoglutarate, and the product is glutamate and some other alpha keto acid, which is dependent on what this amino acid is. So because this transaminase right, is specific for alpha ketoglutarate, takes in any amino acid and uses alpha KG, the product of it is always glutamate. Right? And so this is why glutamate, it's all these amino acids have their uh, coming in as amino acids and they're getting their, their amino group transfer to alpha ketoglutarate to form glutamate. Does that make sense? So we can see here there's one, two, substrate, substrate, product, product. Right? Mediated by PLP. And here, coming in from muscle, we've got alanine. We've got alanine, we've got alpha ketoglutarate again. So substrate, substrate, product, glutamate, product, pyruvate. So that's a specific transaminase. It's different from this one, but the mechanisms are the same in terms of the chemistry and the use, use of PLP. It's just that the particular substrates and products are different. But in both cases, and in every transaminase, there's one alpha amino acid, one alpha keto acid, are the two substrates, and the corresponding products from those. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll come back to this when we talk about um, some of the other reactions. Okay. So for now, I want to look at a little bit more at the details of how uh, transamination works. Um, excretory forms of nitrogen, so quick aside. Um, it depends on which, um, which uh, organism you're talking about. Humans are here in urea, they're called ureotelic animals. Um, aquatic vertebrates, um, some other organisms uh, secrete nitrogen as directly as ammonium ion, and then there's some that also secrete it as uric acid. So there's quite a diversity of, of nitrogen um, excretion pathways. Even, for example, from all the you know, highly developed vertebrates, for example, here, um, here, there are actually vertebrates in all of them, all three categories. So you have this, what is really a pretty small part of the phylogenetic tree, just involving vertebrates, kind of on one end you've got this split in amino acid metabolism um, just among those. Yeah. Which one is common amongst all three? You said one process is common amongst all three of the groups. Um, well, the dis no, they're all, they're all distinctions, and they're all distinguished in terms of how the amino acid, how the nitrogen is excreted, which compound it comes out in. They all um, use transaminases. Uh, they all function through glutamate as the key amino acid. I don't know if you remember back when we talked about metabolomics a little bit, and I showed you a slide of the metabolites in E. coli, and glutamate occupied like this massive fraction of the pie chart. Um, this, this is why glutamate occupies a, that big fraction, because every, all the amino acids are getting fed into glue. Is there a specific reason why glutamate was selected? Um, I don't know. Um, glute, there's a, there is a glutamine shuttle from, a, from uh, muscles that, that we'll talk about um, in addition to the alanine shuttle. And because glute, glute can be converted to glue easily, that might be a, a driving force to help pick glue. Uh, otherwise, um, I don't know. Alpha K, so there's a direct transamination of alpha KG, which is relatively early in the TCA cycle. So that may, that may have some effects on, on the overall metabolic network. But be hard to try, be hard to, to really say what that is. Okay, so here's the transamination reactions. Um, so this is from the previous slide here. And this is the structure now of PLP. Okay. So again, not a structure you need to memorize, but one you should be able to recognize. Um, 
So notice that there are two forms of it. Right? So the reaction is going to take us through both forms. One form is an aldehyde, and one form is an amine. Okay. Um, this phosphate group is just binding determinant. doesn't do anything else. Um, but over here, you'll note that we have a positively charged nitrogen. And we know what that's good for. It's good, to be an, it's good as an electron sink. So that's going to be important for that reason. Um, it's enzyme bound. We'll see that it's, it's covalently bound. It forms a shift base. Um, there's this aldehyde form. When you have it, the aldehyde form, it reacts with amino groups. So the aldehyde form is going to be essential in taking an amino acid and taking it into an alpha keto acid. And then the aminated form, meaning the amine form, is going to be essential in taking the alpha keto acid and going to an amino acid. So the reason it's ping pong is we have alpha amino acid binding to a transaminase enzyme with PLP on it in this form. And what will happen is that the alpha amino group will be transferred to PLP to form this form. And the rest of the skeleton is released as an alpha keto acid. And after that first product is released, then we can have another alpha keto acid come in. Now it's the alpha keto acid substrate will, will undergo a reaction with the amine form of the PLP, regenerating this form and spitting out the second product, which is an, al an alpha amino acid. Does that make sense? Wait, so the aldehyde form makes uh, amino acids? If it's, well, think of it like this. You have, a, you have a keto group, essentially, and you have a, um, an amino group. So whatever form you have in the cofactor, it finds the opposite one in the substrate. So that if you have an alpha amino acid here, you can imagine exchanging this for the alpha amino group of the amino acid so that this, this came from the amino acid substrate. And then this guy got turned into um, this. This part got got substituted for the alpha amino group that was on there, so that you make an alpha keto product, and then that goes. Okay. So here's the first step um, of a reaction. So we'll look at it from the point of view of of uh, uh, PLP starting. Um, so here's PLP in the um, aldehyde form. Um, and there's a, so transaminase has an active site lysine and it displaces water to form a shift base on the enzyme. And so this should look familiar, especially also the release of water. If you go back to glycolysis and you look at the alkylase reaction, remember that there was a lysine and it formed a shift base with, with the glucose related metabolite. Bisphosphorylated glucose, or fructose 1 6 bisphosphate. Right. So, this is the same thing. Right. And this, is, this linkage here is the same linkage to shift base. So, I won't write this out, but um, it's, it's essentially the same mechanism as we already saw in, in alkylase. Okay. And so, when we get this shift base, it's also called an internal aldehyde. So, those two are, those are two names for the same thing. So shift base is, at least with respect to PLP reactions, shift base is also called an internal aldehyde. Okay. So at that point, um, it gets very complicated. Okay. So here's the internal aldehyde. Here's the enzyme, the transaminase, bound to PLP. And the first step is going to be binding the amino acid. So we're going to end up, we're going to go through an intermediate, um, which is, um, because the amino acid came from outside, it's, it's called an external all. So we're going to form an external aldamine. We're going to replace this enzyme shift base with another shift base where the, the now the linkage is just to this amino acid that came in. Okay. Um, and once we do that, we're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to have a proton abstraction step which relies on the specific properties of PLP. In particular, this nitrogen positive charge down here. You can sort of see electron 
see this chain of electron pushing ending up on that end. Right? So this is an electron sink to facilitate this abstraction of a proton. Right? And that will allow us to form what's called a quininoid intermediate. And then that quininoid intermediate can go, here it is here, here it is here, here it is here. Right? So this is, du this is duplicative here. This duplicates that. Just shows you different pathways here, A, B, C, for what kinds of things the PLP can facilitate, what kinds of reactions. In fact, PLP is probably the single most versatile cofactor in all of biochemistry. And it's kind of like a dream for organic chemists who have like discovered enzymes, you know, and, and can spend the rest of their careers doing nothing but pushing electrons around with PLP skeletons. And nothing makes organic chemists happier than to do things like that. Um, so, but it's very versatile in metabolism. So we're just going to get a quick look at it here in the context of, of uh, transamination. Um, you could also look at this corner of the slide here. Um, the quinoid intermediate is shown here and here and here again. Um, but this resonance, right, between here and a carbanion form where this has a plus charge on the nitrogen, right? And so that should be familiar as well. We have a carbanion form. Um, and in this case, the carbon ion is, uh, is, is happening because there's a carbon-hydrogen bond cleavage, not a carbon-carbon bond cleavage. Um, but here, this CH bond is going to go through a cleavage, is going to go through a carbon ion, and that carbon ion is going to get stabilized through here, ultimately all the way down to that 10+. plus. So that's the, that's the overall picture. So 